Welcome to Principles of Microeconomic Theory with me, Dr. Craig Webb. In this lecture, we'll be thinking about how to measure how much one quantity responds to changes in another quantity. For example, how much does consumer demand for a good respond to price changes? Now, different goods are sold in different units and different currencies. So how can we compare the responsiveness of consumer demand for these? To address this problem, we'll be looking at the idea of elasticity, a very useful and widely used concept in economics. We'll study the definition of elasticity in various forms and calculate elasticities for various demand functions. Finally, we'll look at a taxation problem and show how a little work and a little knowledge of elasticities unlocks some powerful insights into the problem. Let's get started. Here's a question to think about. Which of these is more responsive to price changes? Demand for water in the UK or demand for rice in Japan? We're looking for a way to measure responsiveness so that we can compare the responsiveness of demands for different goods in different countries. My first thought here would be to consider this, the partial derivative of demand with respect to price. This does tell us how demand changes when price changes, so perhaps we could use this to answer our question. Unfortunately, there are some problems here. This quantity term Q would be measured in litres when talking about water, but would perhaps be measured in kilograms when talking about rice. Changes in litres and changes in kilograms are not immediately comparable. Also, this change in the price term in the UK this is measured in pounds sterling, and in Japan, it's measured in yen. So again, comparing these changes has the problem of different units. Perhaps we could look up the current exchange rate, but maybe there's a better way. Take a moment and pause the video, perhaps, to think about how you would approach a problem of measuring how demand responds to price changes and see if you can fix these issues. OK, so let me show you the idea that's widely used in economics. Instead of looking at absolute changes in price and demand, the idea is to consider percentage changes or proportional changes. This is what we call elasticity. Let's see how this fixes the problem. If elasticity of demand for water equals minus 5, then a 10% decrease in the price leads to a 50% increase in demand. If the elasticity of demand for rice is negative 0.5, then a 10% decrease in the price leads to a 5% increase in demand. Even though we're comparing different goods sold in different units in different currencies, we can now claim that demand for water is more responsive to price changes, actually 10 times more responsive, by comparing the elasticities. Now we have the basic idea, it's time to do some analysis and work with the definition a bit more. The percentage change in demand can be calculated like this, taking Q prime, the new demand, minus Q to get the change in demand, dividing it by Q and multiplying it by 100 to get a percentage change. We use this triangle, which is a Greek capital delta, as a shorthand for the change Q prime minus Q. The percentage change in price can be calculated in the same way. Let's replace these expressions in our elasticity formula and, with some cancelling of common terms and cleaning up a bit, we get elasticity equals change in Q over change in P multiplied by P over Q. With this formula, we can deal with changes of any size and to be specific, this is known as arc elasticity of demand. As this is a microeconomics with calculus course, we're going to replace this change in Q over change in P expression with this partial derivative. This is called point elasticity of demand. Why would we do this? Well, because we're going to get deeper results much more easily now that we're using calculus. We'll do a nice application to a tax problem in a following video. The idea of elasticity can be applied very generally we focused on price elasticity of demand as a motivation. Suppose we have Z is a function of, for example, two variables, X and Y. This might not be a demand function. It might be a model of any quantity that depends on two other quantities. Well, we can still talk about elasticity using this formula, and we refer to this as the elasticity of Z with respect to X. 
Here is an exercise to attempt before watching the next video. This gives two different ways of calculating elasticity. You can take the partial derivative of z with respect to x and multiply this by x over z. That's the way we've already introduced. Or you can take logs and take the partial derivative of the log of z with respect to the log of x. These two formulae are in fact equal to each other. Have a go at proving this and I'll show you the solution in the next video.